Adobe Firefly was recently released and I finally got access to it. So, is it good? Is it bad? Should you use it? And how does it compare to the Stable Diffusion 2.2 Excel model? Hello humans, my name is Kayo Air Overload and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Adobe Firefly. How does the new Stable Diffusion based model performs? How is the quality of the generation? And how does it compare to the Stable Diffusion 2.2 Excel model? Now I decided to compare these two models together because they are both based on the Stable Diffusion technology and I also suspect that they've been trained in a very similar way. Now I was at first planning on comparing Adobe Firefly against Midjourney generations, but since apparently Midjourney is not based on Stable Diffusion, I don't think that this would be a fair comparison. This would be like comparing an apple and a tomato. Yes, they're both round, yes, they're both red, yes, they're both fruits, but you won't put a tomato in a fruit salad. I I'm, I'm not sure where I was going with this, but uh, anyway, let's begin. Alright, so Adobe Firefly. This brand new text to image AI model based on stable diffusion technology trained on ethically sourced images, released by our beloved Adobe company. Now I'm not gonna go into too much details about what Adobe Firefly is and what this means for the future of our artists because I've already done a video about it, so if you haven't watched it, definitely watch this video first. But basically Adobe trained their own model of stable diffusion based on copyright free images with the goal of creating a bunch of AI art tools for creative professionals and with the goal to try to not alienate the artist community. Now when it comes to the tools currently available in Adobe Firefly, we currently only have two options, the text to image and the text effects. Which I gotta say is a little disappointing because most of the amazing tools that they showed in their preview, like the in-painting, the out-painting, none of these tools are currently available. So I'm definitely waiting for the time that these tools come out so I can try them out myself. But okay, fine, for now let's actually try the current available options, the current available tools, and see how the quality of the generation compared to the Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL. Because one of the reasons why I decided to compare Adobe Firefly against Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL is that when you look at the UI, it is actually pretty similar to the new Dream Studio Beta website, where we have here a very similar style selection option that allows us to visualize and change the style of an image based on these preset keywords, exactly like we have in Adobe Firefly. So I'm definitely interested in trying this out myself and seeing how they compare. Alright, so in Adobe Firefly, I gotta say, the UI looks very, very clean. Every parameter is clearly defined and clearly separated. You have the aspect ratio where you can change the ratio of an image on the fly and redo the entire generation from scratch in only a few seconds and it's actually very very fast because as you can see in like maybe what like 5 seconds it regenerated 4 different images in a completely different aspect ratio. You can change the content type to something like photo, graphics, art and again just like the aspect ratio it generates a brand new style of image in only a few seconds. So when it comes to the speed of generation Adobe Firefly is actually very impressive. And as you can see as of right now I've chosen the photo content type and if now I choose something like graphic it has now generated four new images although personally I don't really see a lot of differences between the photo and graphic to be honest and also as you can see here since it has generated a new content type I can switch back and forth and immediately see the results of this generation and if now I do the same with art I can now compare all of these content types together whenever I want. Now again I'm not sure which one is really the best one I feel like the content type now feels a little bit better on this one I'm not quite sure what the photo content type is actually less less photorealistic than the non-content type, but okay, alright. So then you have the choice of different styles, and it's separated into different categories, like popular, movements, themes, techniques, effects, material, concepts. So let's say I want something like a steampunk robot in maybe a pencil drawing. If now I click on generate, it didn't exactly follow what I was expecting to be honest. I was expecting a more like black and white pencil type drawing instead of a color painting, but maybe the problem is here. A fantasy painting. So if I simply maybe delete fantasy painting and I click on generate again, now it's a little bit better but to be honest it's really not that great. I definitely don't really see the pencil drawing here. But maybe if I click on art, nope, still pretty bad. So I'm not quite sure what's happening here. The generation isn't really that great to be honest. And at least with the pencil drawing style that I chose right here, it certainly doesn't work very well. So now what I would like to do is actually compare it to the Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL. So I'm gonna select the same exact prompt, put it right here, and actually I'm gonna input the same parameters, but this time I'm gonna put it myself, like 
art, steampunk, and pencil drawing. So now if I click on dream, we have this kind of generation, which <laughs> I don't know, man, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna be very honest, I'm not sure which one is really the best one or the worst one. And even with a new generation for this prompt, I don't really get anything really that better. For some reason, I only got one boot each time. This one is by far the best generation. Okay, I I'm gonna be very honest, I think that for now, this experiment is a total failure. So I'm gonna try with another prompt here. Okay, so how about something very generic, something a little bit more photorealistic, a hyper-realistic portrait of a beautiful woman with blonde hair, green eyes, smiling, and if I click on generate, we get something like this, which is okay although for these two women they don't really have green eyes they do have blonde hair but even on these two images here the green eyes also look a little bit weird they look very unnatural now having said that the actual photorealism is pretty good i think that most people wouldn't be able to tell that this is an ai generated portrait this is actually really clean so now i'm curious what would happen if i click on photo and I get these types of results which is okay it's definitely not really better and for some reason, these two women have now the exact same face. So now if I click on graphic, you have now almost kind of like a digital painting style of these women. These are basically very similar generation, but this time in a digital art style. And if I click on art, again, we have a very similar generation compared to the graphic content type. Okay, so now if I choose different styles and combine them together, like the synth wave, science fiction and fantasy, and I click on generate, I get something like this, which, okay, not bad, not bad, not terrible. But again, nothing that really blows me away here. So now if I use the same exact prompt with the Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL, I get something like this, which yes, indeed, now all of these women have now green eyes and blonde hair. However, that's definitely not hyper-realistic. And even when I modify the prompt and choose a photorealistic portrait instead of hyper-realistic, I still don't really get a phototype portrait like I was expecting. And if I put that same photorealistic prompt inside Adobe Firefly, indeed, now I get some photorealistic portraits, but now again, it doesn't really follow the prompt correctly. Because again, although these women have blonde hair, some of them don't really have green eyes. So it's kind of like the opposite for these two models. The Adobe Firefly model follows the photorealistic portrait, but doesn't really follow the rest of the prompt. Whereas Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL follow the rest of the prompt, but not the beginning. So unless I'm doing something bad, unless I'm doing something wrong, it's almost like these models complement each other. And here in Stable Diffusion, even if I input in negative prompt painting and digital painting, I still don't really get a photorealistic image. I mean, this one is by far the closest one, but it's still really not that good. So yeah, I gotta say for now, I'm really not that impressed. Okay, so now we'd like to see if Adobe Firefly can do celebrities. So if I simply put a photo of Scarlett Johansson and I click on generate, well, 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 well. Uh oh, one or more words violates Firefly user guidelines and were removed. Ah, I love censorship. Well, there you go, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. And okay, fine. I'm I'm not done, but it's really kind of disappointing. However, I'm pretty sure that if I put this inside Stable Diffusion and if I click on Dream, yeah, I mean that's what I thought. I mean, if you remember my previous video on the Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL models, you know that the 2.2 XL Beta, which is the aesthetic model, this model was definitely not trained on images of celebrities. Meaning that if you want to generate images of a celebrity, well, you can't. This video is becoming more and more depressing, to be honest. I was not expecting this. Okay, so next test, I would like to see if the hands are better in the Adobe Firefly compared to Stable Diffusion 2.2. So if I simply input a photo of a person showing their hands to the camera, if I click on generate, I get something like this, which actually not bad. This one is definitely the best generation, but actually every single image that was generated has only five fingers. So... Yeah, n not bad, pretty good. However, if now I change the content type to a photo, suddenly it becomes a little bit worse. I mean, this one is pretty okay again, but this one and this one and this one are really not that great. And it's pretty much the same thing for the graphic content type and the art content type. It's okay, it's not that bad, but if you want to compare it to something like Mid Journey, it's definitely, definitely way worse. So now if I throw the same prompt with the Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL and I click on Dream, I get something like this, which, yeah, really not that great but although again do not forget that the stable diffusion excel beta model is still in 
preview, it's still in training, so it's not the definitive final model, so keep that in mind. This could always get way better. But technically I could also say the same thing for Adobe Firefly, so... So if I have to judge this right now, the Adobe Firefly model is definitely better. So now I would like to see how these models handle popular artist style. So in this example, I simply input a portrait of a panda in the style of Van Gogh, and if I click on generate, I get something like this, which is... yeah, not really. That's definitely a panda, alright, but that's not the style of Van Gogh. And it's the same if I choose photo, graphic, or art. There is very, very little variation here. The panda looks good, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not the style of Van Gogh. But now let's see how Stable Diffusion handled the same prompt. So again, a portrait of a panda in the style of Van Gogh, if I click on Dream. Ah, uh, now we get definitely something that is way closer. It's still not that great, I'm gonna say. I mean, for reference, this is Van Gogh, and this is a panda supposedly in the same style. So, you know. And actually, as I said, the Stable Diffusion 2.2 XL and the Adobe Firefly model basically complement each other. Because here in Adobe Firefly, the panda looks very, very good, but this is not the style of Vincent van Gogh. And here in Stable Diffusion, we have the style of Vincent van Gogh, more or less, but the panda definitely doesn't look that good. So we would get a killer model if we could merge these two models together. Now, don't get me wrong, I think that Adobe Firefly is actually a very powerful model, where you can generate some very, very cool images. For example, if I choose something like photorealistic toad practicing karate, I get images like these, which are really not bad. Because if I use that same prompt inside Stable Diffusion, I get something like this, which is, uh, yeah, definitely not the same quality. And sure, it's true that Stable Diffusion is definitely way more flexible than any other model, like Mid Journey or Adobe Firefly, since you can use Control Net, Image to Image, in painting. But if we're talking about simple ease of use and raw generation, I think that Adobe Firefly is actually the winner. It has a very similar feel to Mid Journey, but once we get other tools like InPainting or Dream Booth Training, this could definitely become a very, very powerful tool. Now, the censorship in Adobe Firefly is definitely super, super annoying. And as of right now, it's still not clear which keywords are not allowed, which is why it's so important to push for open source models. Now, another tool that Adobe Firefly has as of right now is text effects, where you can input a text and a text effect. And if you click on generate, it will generate a text in the effect that you input right here. And the quality behind the generation is actually very, very impressive. I mean, try to do the exact same thing inside Stable Diffusion with a full word, and this level of generation would be very, very difficult. And yet Adobe Firefly does it very easily and very well. You can even choose different text effects, different fonts, different background colors, and if you don't have any idea, you can simply choose the sample effects that are already pre-made for you. So yeah, I think that as of right now, this feature in Adobe Firefly is definitely the best option that they have compared to the text-to-image option. So yeah, as of right now, that's Adobe Firefly. Pretty good quality stable diffusion model with a very easy to use UI, but the model doesn't really seem very flexible and has sometimes trouble following the prompt correctly. And the censorship is also very annoying, which clearly shows the future of these company-owned stable diffusion models. Which is why we should definitely push for more open source models and tools made by the community. If we don't want our creativity controlled by big corporations. Because that's certainly not a future that I personally want. And there we have it folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.